I'll be covering specifically Crute mercenaries in this video. To hear about general Crute species lore, please watch my rock and roll play video on the Crute species. When a Crute finds the need to consume and therefore assimilate new DNA into themselves, they leave the confines of the Tau Empire and thus break the exclusivity contracts that they have with them. This then forces the Crute to become a mercenary to survive. Crute mercenaries are few and far between in the Imperium, and there must be less than a handful residing in the Gilead system specifically. Crute that hail from the Gilead system use the war sphere the Hal Marok as a base of operations and the opportunity for comfort amongst their own kind. As briefly touched upon before, Crute eat the flesh of their enemies and then mutate to become something stronger. This usually comes in the form of slight attribute increases, but can also be useful biological or survival mechanisms that form on their bodies. With a speed of 7, you're a little faster than some of the other species in the core rulebook, and you've been granted skills for the XP cost to reflect your more agile and stealthy nature. When building a Crute Mercenary, you can pick from a number of mutations. There are 11 in total, and you get to pick one for every tier that your character is at the beginning of play. Some are marked as not readily suitable for starter play with an asterisk. Once you ascend, you gain another mutation, this relies heavily on the types of opponent that you've been fighting and consuming, but as always, is subject to the discussion with your GM. You cannot, however, consume the flesh of Tyranids or Chaos Warped beings, or the mechanical parts of Necrons, Wraith God, or Scutarii. These mutations are more thoroughly covered in the Rock and Roll Play video on the Crute species, but a brief outline of all 11 can be seen here for convenience. All of these mutation bonuses are permanent, by the way. Also worthy to note that there are no rules saying you can't take the same one twice, so min-maxers out there might be doubling up on some of these stat-based mutations. Eldari offers you plus one to agility or willpower. Man-eater is plus one to your lowest attribute, picking if there's several of the same value. Bioluminescence grants the ability to shed light, and if you make your whole body do it, you emit light up to a 10 meter radius. Orc Eater offers plus one to strength or toughness. Armoured Hide gives you a plus rank to your base resilience. Hypersensitive Quills gives you an ability akin to how the Auspex Scanner works, but with a limited range of 30 meters and it activates as a combat action. A Starter's Eater offers plus two to an attribute of your choice. Weaponized Biology gives you a powerful unarmed strike and also allows you to choose either Brutal, Rending, Inflict Poison or Parry to those unarmed attacks. Camouflage lets you apply the effects of the Chameleon Cloak as a simple action. Facultative Bipedalism allows you to sprint twice as fast and apply double rank bonus dice to jump and climb. And lastly, Wings allows you to fly with a speed of 7. You begin play with a Crute Rifle and Crute Armour. The rifle in particular is pretty cool. Because it has blades on the muzzle and the stock, it acts as both a ranged and melee weapon. Range damage is a solid 8 with 1 ED and the melee damage is 4 damage plus 5 ED, so certainly nothing to sniff at. The armour itself isn't amazing, with a 2 armour rating, but it will get you started, remembering that this archetype is set at default of tier 1. For suggested equipment, keep in mind that your adaptive loyalty enables you to gain the Imperium keyword, or even the Eldari keyword depending on who you are currently working for. This means that you have options open to you depending on which faction you currently are with. The models seen here are from the Crute Carnivores box set from the Tau range. There are a lot of variation poses and components here to have fun with, highly recommended. Seen here is the Crute Shaper. It's important to know that the mercenary isn't specifically a Shaper, which is the shamanistic leader of Crute Kindred. Kindred is the name of a Crute clan, by the way. Maybe we'll see the Crute Shaper as a future higher tier archetype for the Crute species. Here is the limited edition 2001 Crute Shaper model called Angor Proc. This model is a super rare collectible and unfortunately isn't available to buy anymore, but it looks great. And finally, here is the coolest Crute model so far. De Yak Grek is from the Blackstone Fortress box set and is a must have for anyone's collection, especially if you're playing a Crute mercenary. He is the most recent model in the Crute collection.
As I said before, there's now an entire video dedicated to the overall roleplay of a Kroot. However, when specifically talking about the mercenary, there are a few important things to consider. The first thing is that you've left the Tau, and in particular your kindred, behind to pursue your own goals. This isn't necessarily an act of shame, but you could miss your kindred, or even be on the run from them. Your relationship with the Imperium and other races is tenuous. It's more than likely a pure mercenary relationship, scratching each other's backs until you fulfil your goals. At least at first, you could end up warming up or becoming quite loyal to the companions you find yourself with. Kroot treat their prey or opponents with a spiritual respect if they consider them to be venerable enemies. You may wish to meditate upon your up and coming battle and ritualise the moment after you have downed a formidable foe. And finally, Kroot are usually known to be unemotional and pragmatic, but remember, at the end of the day, this is your character, so you call the shots.